here with me in the studio. Hi, Stephen. Hello, Let's start with the uh, Mobile World Congress that's taking place in Barcelona. And Facebook's uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, gave a keynote address. Yeah, and he used that opportunity to defend the price that Facebook paid for the mobile messaging service WhatsApp. Facebook last week said it was going to pay $19 billion in cash and stocks uh, for WhatsApp. Price has surprised many people, it has to be said. Zuckerberg says he plans to leave the service unchanged, although the firm itself did announce that it would be launching a voice call service uh, later this year. Mark Zuckerberg says that it was a valuable investment for Facebook and worth the money. I actually just think that by itself it's worth more than $19 billion. I mean, it's, it's hard to exactly make that case today um, because they have so little revenue compared to that number. But, I mean, the reality is there are very few services that reach a billion people in the world. They're all incredibly valuable, much more valuable than that. So, I mean, there's and a chance... they're halfway that, there already. I yeah. could be wrong. Now, staying in Barcelona, Samsung used the event to unveil its new Galaxy S5 smartphone. The South Korean firm is trying to keep its top position in the smartphone market. It currently has about 30% of that market. Its main rival, Apple, doesn't attend the Mobile World Congress, won't be there this year either. But it has lots of other competition from old and new names, as Catherine Viet now explains. It's the market leader in smartphones and it's upping the ante at the Mobile World Congress. In a bid to ward off a rising challenge from China, Samsung is betting on biometrics. We've talked about the health monitoring, the heart rate uh, monitoring side of the phone and also in the wearable devices. We're going to see great new innovations with people who you know, take uh, health and fitness to whole new levels. The heartbeat monitoring on the Galaxy S5 is a world first and it's designed to work in conjunction with the company's smartwatches. Samsung made about 30 percent of all smartphones sold last year, nearly twice the share of arch rival Apple, which once again skipped the event. Nokia, which was once a market leader, is struggling to stay relevant. Bought by Microsoft, it's turned to rival Google to power its new line of phones, the X and X Plus. A move that's left some analysts scratching their heads. I think it'll be really interesting to see how long Microsoft supports this project and this strategic push once the acquisition closes. The growth area for mobile phone companies is now in emerging markets, where low-cost Android models sell particularly well. More than 1.1 million devices running Android are expected to ship this year, compared with just 360,000 using the Windows operating system. Well, staying with uh, technology, it's good news for one Chinese company. Yes, Chinese equivalent of Twitter, Weibo, has announced uh, that it's turned a profit for the first time in its history. Sina, which is Weibo's parent company, said the service had earned $3 million in operating profit uh, in the fourth quarter of last year. Sina as a whole saw profits jump to over 44%, uh, sorry, 44 million, uh, helped by a 160% jump in advertising revenue. For Weibo, Sina, Ch Sina says that Weibo has some 500 million users uh, in China to date. And staying in China, LinkedIn has launched a Chinese language version of its professional networking site. The company says it will cooperate with strict censorship laws in China, so it won't allow users to take part in group discussions. CEO of Jeff Wino says the company is targeting 140 million Chinese users and pledged to be transparent about the restrictions on its service. All right, let's see how the markets are doing today. Yeah, well, a positive lead from Wall Street overnight has helped Asia's markets in trading today. The Nikkei in Japan leading the gains up almost 1.5%, as you can see there. Quite the opposite picture in China, though. The Shanghai Composite down over 2%. This over jitters about its property sector. House prices there grew at a slower rate than it expected in January, hitting shares there the biggest fallers today in Asia. And here in France, there's a new law that will make it more difficult for companies to close profitable factories. Yeah, this came about after the closure of a, a steelmaking plant owned by ArcelorMittal in uh, Florence, which is in the east of France. Uh, Francois Hollande had visited the uh, site back in 2012 during his election campaign and promised that he would make it harder for companies to close factories that were making money. This is a very controversial decision uh, at the time. This law means that companies employing more than 1,000 people uh, will have to try to find a buyer for sites that they want to close, which are profitable, uh, or risk paying penalties of up to €28,000 per worker they want to lay off. Now, the new rules have been criticised, though, uh, for discouraging job creation. 
The economy has to remain fluid. When you put the brakes on, in this case when a company is sold to another owner, it doesn't help job creation. And finally, uh, the happiest place on earth is also shaping up to be a, a pretty expensive one to visit. Yes, not exactly the most expensive place on earth, but pretty pricey nonetheless. Disney has re uh, increased the price of a daily ticket to its Magic Kingdom theme park to $99. Uh, it is, though, the world's most visited theme park, with some 17 million people passing through the gates back in 2012. Uh, this increase comes after Disney says that it, its revenues from its theme parks grew by 16%. Last year to over $670 million. It must build a magic, I think, that makes these things uh, so expensive. Gosh, $99, though, just to blow a kiss to Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Quite. It's a, it's, a, it's a magical experience, we're told. <laughs> all right, Stephen, thank you very much. That was Stephen Carroll with all of today's business news. And let's see what's uh, making the buzz on the internet. We'll talk about uh, protests in Turkey against uh, the new internet restrictions. Let's take a look. As we can see from this footage filmed in Istanbul, Turkey, over the weekend, the protests against a new law tightening control of the internet show no signs of waning. Thousands of people gathered in Taksim Square on Saturday to protest against this highly controversial law, which came into force on Wednesday and which gives the government authority to block web content it deems offensive or in violation of someone's privacy. The rally saw rise to a number of clashes between protesters and police who use water cannons and tear gas to disperse the crowds. Opponents of the new legislation have been making their voices heard on the streets, but also via social media. The Unfollow Abdullah Gul campaign was launched on Twitter last week, urging Turkish microbloggers to do just that and stop following their president, the man who ratified the famous bill. In just a few days, the Turkish head of state has already lost tens of thousands of followers. Left-wing daily Radical says the law undermines freedom of speech. And to highlight this, every four hours it deletes all the content published on its website, denouncing the legislation and reminding people that it takes the government just four hours to remove any information it deems inappropriate. German company Pedia Press wants to print the entire English Wikipedia online encyclopedia. That's over four million articles. It will be printed onto over one million pages, making up 1,000 books. Web users can donate to get this massive undertaking off the ground. Pedia Press has launched a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo and hopes to complete the project before the annual Wikipedia convention, which will be held in London in August. Is there going to be a sequel to the animated movie Space Jam, released in movie theatres in 1996? There has been a great deal of online speculation after an article published on Deadline.com claimed plans were underway to produce Space Jam 2. An NBA basketball player, LeBron James, would be taking over from Michael Jordan in the lead role. The rumours spread across the web like wildfire, but sources close to the Miami Heat player have refuted them. Web users in the US have been posting under the hashtag True Detective Season 2 with tongue-in-cheek predictions and their replacement options for Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey, the current stars of hit HBO series True Detective. And there have been some very interesting suggestions for the new crime-cracking duo. British athlete Damien Walters has become the first human to complete a 360-degree loop on foot. His amazing feet were sponsored by a well-known brand of soft drink and required hours and hours of training. You can see him in action in this video, which is currently doing the rounds on sharing sites. <laughs> can somebody show him that one back? Well, this one's it. I know I've said that three times now, but this one is it. But I'm, I'm close, I reckon I'm close. Getting close. 
can't really go anywhere. You wish you could just do that. All right, we're going to have a short break now, but don't go away. If the France 24 special on farming is coming up in just a few moments, we'll take you to the heart of the Paris Agriculture Show. So do stay tuned for that.